Hello, my name is Dan Quintana and this is a companion video for an article describing the use of the meta meta package which calculates statistical power for a range of hypothetical effect sizes for studies included in meta analyses. Let's jump straight in. In order to get the package, we need to install the DevTools library and then install it directly from GitHub using the first three commands here or the first all these lines here. Let's load up the package and the first thing we're going to do is look at one of the example data sets that we're going to be using, which is included within the meta meta package. The first one is dat oi, and it includes three columns, a study column, a column of effect size, and a column with standard errors. And we need the file to have these particular column names in order for the function to work. First function includes three arguments or three bits of information that we need to include. The first one is the data set. The next one is the observed effect size. So this is the summary effect size from the meta-analysis that we're extracting this, the, the study data from. In this particular example, it's 0.178. And finally, the name of the meta-analysis, which we'll be using for visualization purposes. Let's run that. And then this has, or this, this particular function generates two data frames. The first data frame provides results looking at power for a range of hypothetical effect sizes here. Let's have a look. The first one is assuming the effect size, assuming the observed summary effect size is the true effect size. And this is quite ambitious because meta-analyses tend to inflate effect sizes from the true effect size, but I've included this as a measure of reference. So assuming the observed effect size is the true effect size, power is low across all these studies. Only one of these studies actually has power above 10%. We also see that there is power assuming an effect size of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, all the way up to an effect size of 1. Once we start get, getting up to an effect size of 1, do we begin to see higher levels of power? But looking at this uh, on balance, we can see that for these particular studies, they are not designed or they're not designed to reliably detect a wide range of effect sizes. We can only reliably detect really, really big effect sizes, but not m small or medium or what you would traditionally call small or medium effect sizes. Finally, rather than copying and pasting all these results, we can export this as a CSV file, look, uh, which is run from line 18. Uh, the next thing we can do is look at the median across all these studies. So this provides a summary for the body of evidence for all these studies together. Let's run these first two. This particular uh, column ES observed looks at the median power across all these studies, assuming the observed effect size is the true effect size. Um, it's quite low. And we can also see the median assuming a, a range of effect sizes from 0.1 all the way to one. So this provides a summary for the body of evidence for this particular meta-analysis. And finally, we can do a visualization using the firepower function. Let's zoom in a bit, have a look, and this provides this handy visualization which you can use, which shows you the power for a range of effect sizes. And this is quite striking. Only large effect sizes can reliably detect these effects. Smaller effect sizes cannot reliably detect these effects for this particular uh, body of evidence or this particular meta-analysis. Next thing we're going to be looking at is confidence interval data. So rather than looking at effect sizes and standard errors, we're going to be looking at effect sizes and confidence intervals. These are the two bits of information which are commonly reported in meta-analyses. If you're looking at a forest plot or if you're looking at the results, they report either standard errors or confidence intervals, sometimes both. But by default, the most common software packages for meta-analysis either report confidence intervals or standard errors for the studies that they include in their meta-analysis. Let's have a look at this data set. We have a list of study names, a measure of effect, YI, lower bound and upper bound confidence intervals, assuming a 95% confidence interval. We have three arguments for this particular function. Again, uh, the data set, the observed effect size for this particular meta-analysis, it was 0.8, and the name. Remember, if you're using this uh, this particular function, you need to have the uh, data set lay laid out this way, where you have one column called YI, one column called lower, and one column called upper. Let's run this, and let's have a look. 
So for the observed effect size, uh, once again, power is quite low, assuming the observed effect size is the true effect size. And we can see what happens for a range of effect sizes. Now, for this particular meta-analysis, once we start getting up to an assumed effect size of, of, of 0.4, some of these studies actually do have power, or at least one of these studies have power above 80%. 80% is the convention within a lot of research areas and of course different areas have different conventions but for many research areas the uh, power of 80% is, 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 is sufficient. So we have one study here assuming that an effect size of 0.4 is the true effect size but we can see what happens across a whole range of effect sizes here. Again we can write and export the CSV file. Let's have a look at the medians here. So the observed medium, 0.06, quite low, but uh, looking at the medians, it's, it's looking a little bit better than our previous, uh, previous meta-analysis. Let's look at the firepower plot. This one looks a little bit better than previously. We can start seeing around, you know, around 0.6, around 0.7, it's a bit better, and we can detect, we can reliably detect a slightly wider range of effect sizes. It's not great, but it's better than the previous one. Okay, the final thing that we can do is we can combine multiple meta-analyses into one visualization. So we've created and done the analysis for two meta-analyses. So what we're doing here is we're combining them. We're creating a list, and then from that list, we can use the firepower function, and we can actually compare these two meta-analyses. So we can see that here, the Keech meta-analysis can detect, can reliably detect, detect a wider range of effect sizes there. So that is a walkthrough of the meta meta package. I hope it is useful for you.